Hey guys, welcome to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Asteroid Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy and today we're going to be uh, tackling the challenge that is natural gas power generation. The first thing we need to do, of course, is start working towards the fossil fuels research. This is where the gas generator lives and the gas generator has a few things that we need to talk about beforehand before we even start doing so. So the gas generator, you pump natural gas into that bad boy and it pumps out uh, polluted water on the floor and carbon dioxide into a gas vent. So as you can imagine, it's not just a case of build a square room next to the geyser and put a generator in there and you're done. No, 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 you need to build support equipment around the generator. But that's for a little bit later. The first thing we've got to do is start going around, tidying up the base, making sure everything is fine. As you can see, we're getting a bit of a slime lung problem in the algae distillery, but you know, that's, that's kind of expected. The same as slime lung getting in to our fresh well our decontaminating water supply that that's gonna be a thing because we're digging in a swamp biome to get the generator down there's a lot of slime in there with slime comes slime lung thankfully if we have a look at the top left our colony immune system hasn't even dropped down to 50% and that always shows the lowest value there so we're doing pretty well. One of the things I want to do is get another airlock in up this way so we can cut down the travel time. At the moment everyone needs to come down through this bottom path to get to the generator and that's that's no good for us but of course we need to put things like hygiene in place so that we can make sure uh, slime lung etc doesn't get into the core of my base. I'm alright with it being in the algae distillery but if it actually got into the food the chill out areas heaven forbid if it got into the sleeping areas we would have a great troubles so during that first day you can see that the majority of the internal combustion research actually got done there still working towards fossil fuels we need to do internal combustion before we can do the fossil fuels it's just the way the technology tree progresses it would have been nice if there was some sort of way of uh researching just the specific bit of tech you want but i suppose that's not the game system that clay are putting into place here so we're tracking shrouds because the great for a little bit here mainly because he is the go and following the gopher around shows me where my roots are blocked, what the pathing system needs working on. Unfortunately, this particular route has been artificially lengthened because ZTech didn't get the granite out of the way of the airlock. So Shravkus ended up having to go all the way around anyway. And then by the time he got up there, the, the blockage had been cleared. So that wasn't actually a brilliant test. But you know, whatever, there's a little bit of footage for you. The airlock getting finished up by Brum here. You can see that he's going around putting all the tiles in place. And that is actually the bare minimums that I ever think we need for an airlock. You can see people are now transporting slime around everywhere and including slime lung tainted algae into the air uh, deoxygenators, the ones that make uh, the oxygen from the algae. That's not ideal, but it is outputting it onto oxygen. Oxygen up high, polluted oxygen down low. Uh, the slime lung can only exist on polluted oxygen. It dies very quickly on normal oxygen, so we don't have to worry too much about that. That is the main reason that I have got all the deodorizers, the thing that convert uh, polluted oxygen oxygen into fresh oxygen all the way around the distillery because it's nice to not let slime lung take over the base that said slime lung is starting to take over a few of our colony members here you can see that we actually have uh, someone up in the med bay in fact we now have two people and i believe it to be captain subs and a z tech i might be a little bit wrong there but i think that's who they are so we're going to spend a couple of moments here just quickly putting together a med bay you need a toilet uh, somewhere for people to sit and eat and of course the actual med beds that themselves and I put a small uh, sink in between the toilets and the med bay uh, med beds sorry because I feel like that's just a just a good hygiene move in general it's always nice to make sure that people who go to the toilet have a way of washing their hands afterwards because we don't want to be spreading um, food poisoning everywhere no 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 not indeed so with the order set we're just waiting for the duplicates to go ahead and make the med bay but of course we only actually have one person going around doing everything like that it turns out it was Brum and ZTech in the med bay unfortunately uh, Captain Subs being the only person going around doing things like building and digging. Uh, so that is a little bit of a shame. Going to take a long time for that med bay to get put into place. Thankfully, there's only a few things that actually need to be put down for it to become a med bay, like one of those tables, the doors, and a singular toilet, and that'll make everything work out a-OK. -okay. Taking a quick moment to have a look at my power systems here. Of course, this is all in preparation of making the actual power generator later on. It's good to have little isolated systems that you can then put a 
power transformer in front of so I like to segment stuff off into a couple of thousand watt cells and then put stuff down like that ideally I like to group things like uh, lighting together food together research and stuff like that but you know that's all just preference you could just run it off of great big circuits that are only connected by proximity if you like so a little bit of a problem here we now have slime lung inside our water supply it's not the major water supply it's the water supply that is kept for decontamination and slime lung is a little bit harder to get rid of when it comes to temperature control but thankfully it just dies on normal water so it's not really that much of a problem at some point I'm gonna have to build a secondary tank so we can start dumping our dirty water in there while we get this other tank uh, uh, let the germs die off in there and then we'll pump it into the cold biome to cool it down and we'll do some wonderful things like that but yes that's plans for the future right now we've got people are thankfully coming in and making everything that we need for this med bay indeed as soon as that door gets done we are finished I like the way that the airlock has also got itself a, uh, a little room sectioned off there I suppose that makes sense we are uh, cordoning off a small area I would like to know I would like to see some sort of airlock room something that has got like you know a couple of pumps and stuff like that and the uh, duplicates innately recognize as an airlock and then somehow uh, would wait for the gases to flush through or something like that that would be pretty good uh, we're watching a shadow right now mainly because we don't normally watch shadow uh, shadow left the wheeze walk behind which is a, a little vexing because that is definitely the thing that I want to put inside that little power generation block down the bottom there because it's getting a little bit warm down there one of the other negative side effects of these two duplicates going down with slime lung is the fact that our researchers are now fully on making a power they're not really doing a lot of research there so that's a bit of a disappointment one of the nice things that I just figured out about the med bay I say figured out went and read on the wiki about the med bay now I used to think that all it did was a uh, speed up the duplicates healing time but no it actually stops germs spreading from your sick duplicates to your live duplicates running around and caring for them so I mean that's a, a very nice thing that I didn't actually uh, know existed I've uh, marked out the orders for a new room up top that's more just to have a space available for when I need it so waiting on the research for these advanced power generations I could just go ahead and start putting the power generator down but I need to do things like deal with batteries and have power regulators on the go and uh, so there's a one more research that I really would like to get knocked out of the park before we actually start work on the power generation itself. Everybody's going around and doing their beautiful jobs. I'm going to have a quick look around the map and see if there's anything that we can see, any other geysers or anything like that, and it turns out no, nothing immediately jumps out. This is going to be more of a bit of a holding pattern for a little while here, just as uh, people try and heal themselves. I decided making an apothecary probably a good play here. It's definitely something that is going to help our dudes uh, heal up there. The uh, placebo is a good item just for all-round use for people. I'm going to make five of those. I think it's another three that does that, so that's a wonderful for us there. Trapters could Trapticus going around doing the major disinfect it is something that we need to do uh, quite often at least in these lower areas where the slime lung likes to spread I'm now having a quick look at what kills a slime lungs here uh, I've noticed that the slime lung is building up in quite high orders in that uh, grey water tank that we have to the right and I wanted to know how we could deal with that this is where I found that the temperature range is not as forgiving as the food poisoning that's the word I'm <laughs> So I've just realized that the placebos get left on the floor by the apothecary and it would have been smart to set up some sort of food depositing device in the med bay to take hold of that, but I don't have any room in there. I really don't. So we're going to have to just leave it in the kitchen and hope that the sick people coming to get the placebos from the kitchen will be okay. I I'm hoping so. We're watching Shadow here go around and clean up a few of the polluted dirts and stuff like that. Uh, and now Shrouticus as well, also going around cleaning a building, making sure the uh, entire base rolls on forward. Despite the fact that we've got all these empty storage compactors everywhere, the base doesn't seem to actually be getting tidied up that much. And that is because almost everybody's job is something other than tidying. I do believe there are a few people out there that have tidying on their sort of like mid-tier priority, but no one has the top job as the priority. And that might be the thing that we start getting other duplicates in to do. It's just tidy up. We'll make like a janitor's room somewhere and do uh, stuff like that. I don't know if a janitor's room would be different from the bunks. I have no is that I have got a couple of spaces in the actual barracks up there. If you have a look in between 
each of the two beds there is a space for a singular bed now i was saving that for some decoration or something like that but we could just pack in more duplicates here i think that would work out well for us just having a quick shuffle around of our research guys to make them go and produce power a little bit more efficiently and it's working out it ends up working out for us making them go around and spend less time in each individual hamster wheel speaking of those people we are actually going to follow a mad frank around he is one of the people that is uh well he is actually our main research and operate man occasionally he gets sidetracked to go do some jobs such as moving uh, slime into the distillery but that's all a well and good there it's downtime at night again and we're just gonna blitz through it well only with edited acceleration but also with game acceleration and watch mad frank then go into the hamster wheel again now some of the more observant of you might have noticed that down in the bottom actual water supply hopefully we'll go over to it in a second there is a storage compactor down there that i've set up to receive liquefiable uh liquefiable items that's the word i'm looking for sorry uh i literally just had a look at it and came along and told it to sweep up the normal snow this is not some sort of like clever way of getting extra water even though this will be a clever way of getting extra water it's just to start tidying up the the snow biome over there it's getting a little bit cluttered every time duplicates walk through things melt and then re-solidify it, it, it's all getting a little bit out of hand so if we can get the snow and the ice that is the nice clean waters to melt over the top of our normal water supply then everything should work out a-okay and we won't have this horrible situation where we've got all the polluted oxygen uh, all the polluted water sorry trying to spill on the farm and the final item that I did that you may have actually missed there is to put a water bottle emptier on the side that's going to be set up to dump uh, polluted water on the floor. But that's not stuff that's actually polluted. It's only the polluted ice that has melted onto the farm and then we want to just get rid of it off of the actual farm tiles. Because as you can see, when there is polluted water on the farm tiles, the sleep wheat just does not want to grow. That makes me very, very sad. You can see that we've set up this whole elaborate sweep system for the med bay. This is in some sort of vain attempt to keep Brum and Zedtech's morale high as they uh, spend their time being very, very ill. Uh this ends up not being dealt with at all. This is another symptom of the problem of having no one set to tidy up. We will definitely have to address this problem, but it's not going to be in this episode. It might not even be in the next episode. I'm not sure. I've not recorded it yet, so we'll have to find out. Okay, finally onto the preparation of the area. We're going to have uh, the power generation down. Now, we have run out of copper, and this is one of the reasons why I had to dig out that room above us there. That's uh, no big problems, though. We've got lots of other metals if we need plus there's still a lot of copper in the roof above us waiting desperately for brum and zedtech to get off the med beds the original plan with that little uh, pocket of water at the top of where the power generation is going to be was to uh, drop it into a little tank and then pump it out into my dirty water system put it into the gray water tank etc etc but i decided that's not actually needed because once we've got the natural gas power plant down i mentioned earlier that it spits polluted water just onto the floor so I'm going to have to make some sort of system that can deal with that anyway. So why not just throw that water onto the floor and see what happens? That That's going to end up working um, very well for us and saving us a lot of time. I'm now spending some time to have a look at the people, that, uh, all my duplicates. Just have a look at how they are doing. I'm mainly interested in how long these ill people have left on their slime lung. And it turns out it's not overly long. Uh, this room down here is also another one that I'm like umming and ahhing about what to do. It was originally one of our water tanks but of course we have burnt through that water very very quickly i say very quickly it's taken us 71 cycles to burn through the water but get through the water we have and we now have this empty space that's kind of central to the base so we could probably end up using it in something uh, phenomenally useful but i i have no plans if you have an idea drop a message down below probably an electrolysis room maybe the loom room maybe it maybe some sort of hatchery i don't know there's a whole a bunch of things maybe we'll just turn it all into storage there's a whole bunch of things that we could do there. Okay, so I'm going to take a moment to uh, watch these guys try and clear this area out. You can see that I'm trying to just, as I say, dump the polluted water on the floor just to clear the farms out. This turns out it's probably not the best plan. I have to try and figure out some other way of uh, having a little dump room that we can put empty polluted water into and then gets fed into the system. Having it in the bottom of the power generator, it's a nice idea, but it's not a, a long-term solution. It's really only for that specific 
case scenario. So we'll have to build uh, a specific room just outside the base that we can empty polluted water into. Maybe even that thing down there underneath the algae distilleries. That That's also looking uh, pretty ripe there. Or maybe, actually, that's what the water tank could be for. Disconnect the pipes, connect the pipes up to something else. Mm, they could work. Okay, so we're watching people go around and do things. More importantly, we're watching Brum be very, very ill. I was watching Shravskus move water around for a little bit, but it got a little bit repetitive and the camera was just dropping back and forth. So I decided to watch Brum. Yes, of course. I keep doing that. It's not Brum, it's Shravskus. Trying to read their little itty bitty names as they go ripping across the screen is uh, definitely one of the harder parts of doing this uh, post O commentary here. Brum and ZTech, of course, are still in Med Bay. Taking a moment to have a look at their stats, I can see they've got about a couple of days uh, left on there. So we're going to let people like Shroudicus go around and do a few housekeeping things, if you will. We need to collect enough copper together so that we can start working on the power generator. I'm going to get another three to carry on making medicines because, of course, the more medicines we have, the more that ZTech and Brum can eat and that will uh, cut down the amount of time they stay ill. But even still, as I say, uh, cycle and a half, maybe two cycles until these guys can actually come out and do stuff. So, one of the possibilities that I've been thinking of with the room up above, or maybe even the room down to the right, is to make the janitor's cupboard, as I've been saying. But what other duplicates will we be needing? Is, is it only, literally, just a janitor that we need, or is there someone else we need? Do we need more builders? Do we need another another digger? I don't think we do. Maybe more operate and research stuff. Not so much the research, but definitely more operate stuff, as we have quite a high demand on their time at the moment. Going through another night time that the uh basically means that we have got another day less to wait. It's a, a little bit difficult at this point where we're going around trying to just kill a little bit of time. Trying to find the little bits of jobs that people can do. Sir Steve in particular going around doing all the things that actually really need doing. Things like refilling the algae terrariums, getting rid of the rotten food, going over and picking up uh, all sorts of things. In particular ices as I've been saying. We've been trying to put them down in the storage compactor to the left there and I think there is a moment uh, at very shortly where we get to watch some of that uh, actually melt there but we've got ourselves sir steve going around and dropping off all of the waters disinfecting everything it is a beautiful to watch this one guy go around and do so much work one thing i might need to do now that we've been watching him for a little while is move uh, some of this water somewhere else ah and here we go i'm waiting for the ice to melt so yeah i, I would like to get that um a water pump up by the kitchen perhaps have some sort of a system up there where we pump it into a small space with a water pump on it so that people can move uh, items directly from the same floor to the same floor. Having to have a duplicate go up and down that ladder repeatedly just to like fill the mill lice maker with water, that's a, a little bit of a burden on my people. It's one that we uh, willingly take on for the moment, but we should be able to cut that down somehow. It's the same as uh, this med bay here. Uh, we're willing to take the hardship at the moment of not having a storage compactor for food and medicine, because at some point we are going to expand that. What I'm thinking of doing is maybe stacking the mess tables up. I'm not sure if that's something I can do, at least uh, make it accessible as well. But if not, we'll like push the airlock out and things like that. We'll, we'll make room. Okay, so we're just about to start work on the waste disposal system of the power plant. This is one of the most important things to have in place before anything else gets put, put down. Uh, because obviously, if you can't deal with your waste, you're just going to have a, a massive backlog and things are going to go bad. All right, ZTech is our back to work a beautiful is gonna go start clearing out some space and make everything a-okay over that way is Brum also out Brum is indeed also out of the med bay so that is a beauties there I'm looking to the uh, to the very left and I've just noticed that there is actually a gap in the med bay where we should be able to stick some stuff down so uh, maybe these plans will happen a lot quicker than I have been saying okay so with the uh, the waste disposal system in place I decide to slam down a couple of generators and hook up all the pipes and wiring in the background. I have found over time that two generators tends to be the best to deal with the amount of output that a single geyser, a single unresearched geyser puts out. Uh, whilst it doesn't just consume it all at once and carry on going, it does reach the point of almost equilibrium, if you will, where it finishes off all the gas just before the next eruption. Uh, at least that's what it was in the last 
uh, last seasons, last upgrades. We will, of course, have to check these numbers again in this update. But of course, we come back to the Sleet Wheat Farm now that we've put everything down for the power generation and start having a look at that because it is a problem. It has been a thorn in our side for the longest time and something that we need to deal with. So I'm probably just going to throw some tiles around it or something like that. But right now, we are going to watch these guys put this power generator into place, this power station, if you will, uh, to run down uh, quickly what we've got here. Uh, of course, the uh, natural gas generators you can see those outlines at the top there they uh, have a gas output that needs to feed in carbon dioxide and you can see the vent output down on the bottom left there I have a water pump underneath it to deal with the polluted water and just up to the right uh, yet that thing that I just highlighted there ever so helpfully is a carbon skimmer it would be nice to get some sort of like algae terrariums in here to be able to deal with the carbon output so that we can get some oxygen back but unfortunately there's just too much carbon and dealt with. You can see that I moved the gas vent output there. That's because I realized I could get the ladders down one more if I moved it over and then the guys wouldn't have to like try and duck, duck through this tiny one cell gap that I've got there. Oh, is it downtime? It is downtime. It's massively inconvenient, not just during gameplay, but also having a chat with you guys as well, because now we can't see what we're trying to look at. Uh, so the algae distilleries, let's talk about those quickly. Uh, they had actually run out of slime, but obviously now that we are building a new area, Area, more slime is being, I don't want to say produced, excavated. Uh, more slime is being excavated, so they're going to be producing more algae for us, but also, of course, more slime lung getting up and about. You can see there the slime being produced goes into the distillery, laden with slime lung. And mostly, this doesn't actually get um, transferred to the new items. Mostly, it actually gets wiped out when the slime gets turned into algae. But of course, the distilleries have got some transfer on them. That transfer can then transfer onto the new clean stuff. A slime lung does have this tendency to just escape the small confines that we have there. This is why we have the grey water system that we're trying to uh, enact so that we can deal with all that. So the vast majority of the pipes have been put into place and I don't really want to hook up the gas fence, uh, the gas pipes, sorry, until we actually have the waste system down and in place. Uh, I, I have done this but there is a, a small problem that I will sort of cotton on to the fact in a second. I've not hooked up any of the power, any of the cables or anything like that. Uh, I just kind of put all the other uh, all the other systems in place and then I was like, oh wait, we've, I've totally forgotten to take the most important thing into account here. Where are we going to put the power, or the power cables and where is the output and things like that. I do thankfully get on top of that in a second. As you can see, I start thinking about where batteries are going to go. I decided to put them on the outside, level with the door and kind of build from there. This does give us a bit of a void space inside the power station, but I'm, I'm all right with void space. Void space is just kind of future plan. Planning, right? It gives us space to do the things that we need to do uh, when we've realized the things that we've forgotten to do, if you see what I'm saying there. Because inevitably, we have forgotten at least one step in almost any process, and it's nice to have a few tiles all the way around to deal with that. Uh, for instance, the uh, the medicine storage in Medbay. We didn't do that. It's nice to have a couple of tiles to be able to deal with that. I didn't put those extra car tiles in place, and now we're going to have to figure out how to shuffle everything around to deal with that. So that is something that's not going to happen here, thankfully. So a whole load of heavy watt wire going in place. I'm putting the heavy watt wire down. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know actually. It's mainly for the power output. In case at any point uh, the power draw exceeds the maximum 20 watts. Uh, the, the reason that I say this is because the natural generators, I think they only put out eight, 800 watts a, a piece. That's uh, only 1600 tops. That's that's like less, uh, more than a twentieth, but not by much uh, of what is needed. Uh, maybe a tenth, maybe a tenth of what is powered. Yeah, that 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 would be better. Uh, so like super super overkill. But I've I've got the resources at the moment, so that's going to work out a okay. What I'm actually going to do from here is run a heavy watt wire sort of around the base, if you will, not going through it, but literally around the outside wall, and then every now and then have one of those heavy watt wire junction boxes that we've got at the top of the wall on the right here um, to drop down into some sort of like power transformer area where we'll like jump it down to, to smaller wires so that we could run like actual room stuff stuff off of it and that would be great okay we, we seem to be getting a little bit of a red alert because people were going to go to bed before that door had been finished and i was not having that oh no 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 so i had to make sure that food was not actually dealt with there and indeed was the case of dealing with the doorway so uh, so the natural gas wouldn't escape uh, it, it, does, it doesn't matter that much natural gas is not that big a problem but i like to keep it contained in there if 
I can. So you can see people are going through. I'm glad that I've got the door in straight away. There is still leakage there, but thankfully the carbon dioxide seems to like drop down below the natural gas. So I'm all right with that. At some point, we're gonna have to figure out how to pump stuff in and out but that's all uh, stuff for another day. I'm looking around to see if there's somewhere I can fit a power transformer in so that I can power some other stuff in other ways. But then I remember, wait, you can just power things via the wonders of heavy watt wire. So I go and start running all that around to power the uh, the smaller machineries, if you will, the, the waste disposals and the actual pump up there. So that is in essence the power plant finished. We have storage done, though I'd like to copy that storage out sort of four or five times going rightwards. We have all the major systems in a place to run down again. The natural gas is picked up by that gas pump over there. It is pumped into the natural gas generators, those two um, machines in the middle uh, of, of the screen are right now. Uh, the Gas generators make carbon dioxide and polluted water, which both through various means gets dumped down the bottom of the building, whereupon the water pump and the carbon skimmer turn both those items into just normal polluted water, which we pump into the grey water system. That is a beautiful system that will sort anybody out, any gas generator you ever find. Go ahead and use that system. I uh, fully encourage you to just rip this design off a tile for a tile. Right, I'm just going to take a few moments here to have have a look around the base just to finish off. You can see that we've got small germ outbreaks in certain isolated areas. I am a totally totally fine with that because the immune system is strong you can see that we are at 60 percent and here comes the first gas into the system a beautiful now that we've got the uh, the gas flowing the water flowing the carbon flowing we can get rid of that man manual generator if we wanted but i think i'm going to keep it there i've changed its stats so it's like super low priority and only works if the batteries are like properly empty uh, so that uh, it can reboot itself if need be or rather a duplicate can come along and reboot that system if need a be. So I'm having a look at our sleep wheat farm here just to finish us off for the last couple of seconds and I've decided that pump going onto the water is a very bad idea. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do to deal with this. Maybe move all the uh, polluted ice into that storage compactor there but I'm still not even sure if that is going to be a good idea going forwards. I I'm not sure. Th this is a real problem here. If anybody actually has any serious workable plans for this I am all ears because I, I I don't know what to do over here. I think I think what I should do, now that I say that, I say no idea and the plan is just congealing in my head as I talk about it. I think what I need to do is just dig a little hole somewhere that we dump all our polluted water in, have a pump to pump all that into the grey system and deal with it as any other polluted water. That's a really standard plan now that I've gone and put it out into words, uh, but... With that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. We're probably going to do that, probably going to get a bunch more uh, of duplicates, and probably going to start looking for ways to expand this base. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!